thank you everybody for coming to the Aaron Torres podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little black subscribe button at the bottom of your screen, go ahead, click that black subscribe button really does help our audience grow. really does help our channel grow really does help and mean more than you could possibly know. So go ahead, hit that little black subscribe button. Also, Thank you to our presenting sponsor, Betfred Sportsbook and the Betfred Sportsbook app. Bet 50 on any game, get 250 in free bets. Thank you again to Betfred. Thank you again to you. Now, here is the video that you came here for. And so I'm always hesitant to take too much out of spring ball. But there is an interesting development going on right now in one game, one spring game that is going to happen this weekend. This weekend, we get another couple spring games, Alabama. Nick Saban, they will have their spring game, but also we will have another spring game, very interesting, out in Boulder, Colorado, where for the first time, we will see the debut of Deion Sanders, Coach Prime. We know him as Coach Prime, babe. We don't call him Deion on this show. We call him Coach Prime. Coach Prime, it is his debut at Colorado along with his son, Shador Sanders, the quarterback, Shiloh Sanders, his other son, the defensive back, Travis Hunter, potential top 10 pick in the 2024 NFL draft. It is the debut for the Coach Prime show in Boulder, Colorado. They're expecting 45,000 people for this game. And oh, by the way, they are ESPN will be on hand to broadcast it. And so what I want to do is break down what is going on. And I want to break down an interesting piece of news that broke this week in that Colorado announced in the lead up to their spring game. I don't think it's a coincidence that they have not only sold out the spring game this weekend, they have sold out their entire season ticket allotment for the 2023 fall campaign in April, five months before the season starts. First time since 1996 that Colorado has completely sold out its season ticket package. And let me just say one thing. We usually wait until Fridays to do where Aaron was right, where Aaron was wrong, sharing my best and worst takes. But this is one I nailed. I have said from the beginning that I believe that Coach Prime was a guy that every Power Five should be after. I said one school was going to be lucky to get him. And now it's starting to come to fruition. So let's talk about all this craziness at Colorado with Coach Prime. And let me start by saying this. As I just said, I get a lot of stuff wrong over the course of a week, month, year, get a ton of stuff wrong. I'm terrible. I'm the worst. But one thing I have been consistent on, I said two off seasons ago that power five schools should be looking at coach prime. And so I bring it up because I believe that I was probably, I'm not even being sarcastic when I say this. I think I was the first person that was really pushing Deion Sanders, coach prime as a power five, like you got to go get him candidate last year. You can go back and look. The first time that I talked about Coach Prime as he is my number one candidate, it was, how about this, September 19th. You know how I know that? It was because it was a segment that I did on this show directly after Penn State went to Auburn in week three and destroyed Auburn. I think the final score was like 41 to 13 or something like that. And so at the time, I said, look, It's clear Brian Harson isn't working. It's clear if you get destroyed by Penn State, you're not beating Alabama, you're not beating Georgia, you're not beating LSU, on and on down the list. And Auburn has to start thinking about what's next. And I said on September 19th, I think it was the date, go get Coach Prime. He is a difference maker. He is the X factor. And so I bring it up because, listen, Auburn went with Hugh Freeze, friend of the Aaron Torres pod, like Coach Freeze. I think he's going to do really well there. But I knew it only took one guy or girl, one AD, to see the vision that I saw and see the impact that Coach Prime would have on Colorado. And now what's so cool is that we're now seeing it all come to life in front of our eyes. Because when you hire Coach Prime, you get the complete package of everything, of coaching, recruiting, marketing, social media, and we're seeing it come to fruition in Colorado. Think about what Colorado got with Coach Prime the day that he signed up. So first of all, you got a really good football coach. And this is something that has been too lost in all of the conversations about this hire. We talk about the five stars and the the hype and the videos and social media and whatever. You understand 
that over his final two seasons at Jackson State, Coach Prime went 23 and 3 overall. 11 and 2 in 2021, 12 and 1 this past season. One of those losses, by the way, was to an FBS team when he was at the FCS level. So essentially, in his final two years, playing like minded competition, he went 23 and 2 overall. His first year, by the way, was that COVID fall spring season, went four and three after completely taking over the roster. And then again, 23 and three over his final two years. So one, you're just getting a good football coach. And if it was only about football, if that was all it was about, this was still a great hire from for, for Colorado. But here's the thing. The coaching is just the tip of the iceberg when you bring in Coach Prime. Think about all of the other things that come with Coach Prime that we are now seeing come to fruition for Colorado. One, how about just the media blitz that is coming with Coach Prime? One, they have the best in-house media team in all of not only college football, but all of college sports, maybe sports period, okay? Let's give a little credit to Deion Sanders Jr., Coach Prime's son, who runs all of his social media and the team's social media for an account called Well Off Media. That's their media company. You follow them. They have daily updates, practice videos, you name it. The in-house media is through the roof, and it's exposure that nobody else in college football has. No disrespect to anybody else, but it's the truth. But then beyond that, think about all the outside media. First of all, nobody would be talking about Colorado football right now if they had literally hired anybody else. And they could have gotten a good coach. Dan Mullen maybe was available, right? Like, like Dan Mullen's a perfect hypothetical. Former SEC head coach, won big games, went to big bowl games, big name. Dan Mullen isn't creating this kind of interest. Do you understand? ESPN is about to be in Boulder, Colorado. They're sending their A team to Boulder, Colorado this weekend for Coach Prime's debut. Chris Fowler's going to be there. Kirk Herbstreet's going to be there. They usually only go to Alabama, maybe Georgia. Like, think about that. Clemson can't even get Fowler and Herb Street out. Florida State can't. Texas can't. But Coach Prime, they're going to Colorado. In previous years, I don't even think Colorado would get a game right up on ESPN.com. Now they have the A team in Boulder, Colorado. So you think about that. You think about all the national writers that are going to be there, the national media members. I'll be honest. I thought about going out. There were some work restrictions. Host Fox Sports Radio Saturday nights. No big deal. I thought about going out to Boulder myself. Couldn't make it, but it shows you the interest that he has created. Beyond the media interest, how about the fan interest? How about the fan interest? These stats blew my mind. So not, not surprising, but they blew my mind. So did you know, so Colorado is expected to have 45,000 people at their spring game. By the way, tickets were $10 a piece. So I'm not great at math, but that's already a lot of money that you just raised from the spring game strictly from tickets. And what's crazy is this isn't Ohio State, Nebraska, Texas A&M, Georgia, Tennessee. You're not getting 30, 40, 50,000 people regardless of who the coach is. Prior to Saturday, Colorado had never had more than 18,000 people at a spring game. How about this? They average 43,000 people at actual games. They're going to get 45,000 people in the doors when it comes to Saturday's spring game. Oh, by the way, as I said, they just sold out their entire season ticket allotment for the entire year in April. It was just announced. And so it cracks me up because I go back to that introductory press conference when Coach Prime was introduced. And it reminded me of, do you remember this? We talked about it at the time. The AD, Rick George, he had this great comment. They said to him, they said, you know, Coach Prime's salary is this much money. We didn't think that that was in the budget. Where do you, how did you get this much money to go get Coach Prime? And Rick George, the AD was like, well, we don't have the money right now, but we'll find it. Well, you know where you found it? By hiring the best candidate you possibly could. Bunch of ticket sales, spring ticket sales, merchandise, on and on and on and on and on. You obviously have, beyond that, the recruiting interest in Colorado. I'm telling you, look at the numbers on YouTube, on this podcast, on other podcasts, on other YouTube channels. Every day, 
it was a sing it was a a a a a a feeding frenzy. First, it was is Shador gonna follow him? Then Shador follows him. Is Travis Hunter follow gonna follow him? Then Travis Hunter follows him. Kormani, Kormani McLean, excuse me, the five-star cornerback was committed to Miami. National signing day comes. He doesn't sign. Is he going to Colorado? The recruiting interest. Oh, by the way, give it a full year with Coach Prime at Colorado. Wait until this coming June and July. I guarantee you we're going to be talking about day after day after day after day, big-time players committing to the Buffaloes. And then finally, and I don't think you can appreciate this enough, and it does kind of go back to what I just said a second ago, the economic impact that Coach Prime is going to have. So one, just on the athletic department, we just talked about it. 45000 paying $10 a ticket for the spring game. They're going to have 60 plus thousand people in every single game that they play this year at home. So think about the economic impact. Think about the impact that that is not only going to have on the athletic department, but also the impact that it's going to have in the community, in restaurants, parking. I'm sure Colorado's not letting you park for free on Saturday. Maybe they are, I don't know. The concessions at the stadium, beer sales if they have them at the stadium. Oh, by the way, the surrounding community, the gas stations, everyone's got to fill up coming in, fill up going out. Um, the restaurants, as I just said, the 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 grocery stores where you're picking up stuff to tailgate, uh, the restaurants after the game. And now you're gonna have that for seven Saturdays a year where 20 plus thousand extra people are going to be coming in. So again, Coach Prime is the total package, and I give Colorado so much credit for making this move. Now, of course, when I say this really quick, let me just be fair and present the other side. Because anytime I credit Coach Prime, just like when I credit Hugh Freeze or Matt Rule or whatever, what's the pushback? Well, he's got to win games. Well, here's my thing. What what reason do we think to have that Coach Prime isn't going to win a lot of games? Now, is he going to go 12-0 this year? No, he's not. I think he's probably going to lose at least one game. And when I say at least one, I'm being facetious. Like he's going to lose a bunch of games. It's a roster process. They play Oregon. They play USC. They open at TCU, who just made the college football national championship game. Week two, Colorado or Nebraska at home. So it's not going to be easy. But one, this guy is a winner everywhere he's been. I say it all the time. This isn't just a guy that played football that wanted to try coaching. He coached at the youth level and had success. He coached at the high school level and had success. He coached at Jackson State and had success. He knows how to build a program. This isn't him trying it out the way that Chris Mullen decided to try out coaching at St. John's or Patrick Ewing coaching at Georgetown or, you know, Hugh Jackson now coaching at the HBCU level. This guy gets it. He knows how to build a program, and I think he's going to have success. Now, what does success look like? That remains to be seen. Because I think the, the the future of college football is so uncertain right now. I don't even know if Colorado is going to be in the Pac-12 in like 18 months from now, okay? Like when we open the 2024 football season, I don't know if there's going to be a Pac-12. So what is their future? I don't know. What is the 12-team playoff? I don't know. Oh, by the way, what if a job that opens up that he just can't turn down opens up? What if it's Florida State? What if it's whatever? The point I'm trying to make, I'm not going to put a, you know, he's going to be in the playoff in three years. He's going to win a Pac-12 in three years because we don't even know if there's going to be a Pac-12. But this guy's going to win. This guy's going to be successful. And here's the bottom line. He's already proving why he was the right guy for the job and why he would have been the right guy for any job. Why he was the guy that I went to bat for in September, October, November, December, saying somebody go hire this guy. Colorado has, and they are going to take advantage of him. 